gospel according to Matthew, 10th chapter, 40-42. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the twelve apostles. He said, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person, in the name of a righteous person, will receive the reward of a righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. There was a story of a Palm Sunday and a mother's five-year-old son who was sick and unable to go to church. When the rest of the family returned home carrying palm branches, the little boy asked, what were they for? His mother explained, people held them over Jesus' head as he walked by. Wouldn't you know it, the little boy complained, the one Sunday I don't go and Jesus shows up. And that's kind of the way it seems for many people. They go to this church, they go to that church. They're always seeking, but they're not finding. Perhaps there's something a little bit different about them. Perhaps there's something about their spouse or their child. Somehow they just don't seem to fit in. And for whatever reason, they just don't seem welcome. After a while, it seems easy to lose interest. They wonder if the stories they've heard about religion, about Jesus, are they really true? Is there really someone out there? Is there really something to give them hope? How much time should someone invest in this search for the truth? How easy is it to give up? Some do fall short of the goal. They don't finish the race. But if that person is fortunate, and doesn't lose all hope and continues, eventually they might walk into a church and someone will say to them, welcome to our church. Please come sit with me and worship with us. That is when Jesus shows up in their life and they know he is real and they found the truth. As faithful believers, we know that Jesus was with them all along. He journeyed along with every step they took, to every church they went to, to every place. Jesus was waiting for one of his faithful servants to make the introduction, to welcome them in his name. When Pastor Don asked me a few weeks ago to do this service on the 26th, I immediately said yes. I'm always honored that he puts his faith and trust in me to deliver the message. At the time, I didn't know what the sermon would be. I had not seen today's gospel. I just welcomed the opportunity. When I did get around to looking at today's gospel, I found it was the 10th chapter of Matthew, verses 40 through 42. Three verses. I'm not sure if I've ever seen a gospel of only three verses. I wondered, hmm, what will I do with this? So I opened the Bible and I read them. Then I read them again, a little more slowly, sinking, letting it sink into my mind. Because these are powerful three verses. The word welcome jumps out six times in these three verses. The word takes on a powerful meaning, welcome. I looked in the dictionary and it shows two of the best possible meanings for the word welcome in this context. One, received with pleasure and hospitality into one's company or home, a welcome guest. Cordially or willingly permitted or invited, you are welcome to join us. Our readings today and the gospel come from the New Revised Standard Version, the NRSV, and it lists the word welcome in the NSRV 48 times, welcome or welcomed, 48 times. Two times this word comes up in the Old Testament. 
46 times it comes up in the New Testament. 46 times of the 48. Apparently, Jesus thought this word was quite noteworthy and important. The first time we see the word welcome in the New Testament is in today's lesson, in today's gospel, in the 10th chapter of Matthew, as Jesus is sending out the 12 apostles. The 10th chapter tells of, of Matthew tells the story of Jesus sending out his disciples. And he gives them the instruction to pl- proclaim the good news. The good news being the kingdom of heaven has come near. But in addition to proclaiming this good news, they are also to heal the sick, to raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and drive out demons. Jesus tells them to step out in faith. He tells them not to take any provisions with them, nothing. They are to take no silver, or gold, or copper. They're not even to take a bag for food. No extra shirts, no sandals, not even a staff. Jesus' expectation is they will be welcomed and taken care of by the people they are sent out to. Jesus tells them, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Now let's think about that. He's saying, whoever welcomes you, you, the disciples, welcomes Christ. And whoever welcomes Christ welcomes the one who sent him. We're all together in this. We talk about being one body in Christ. And here we see this connection in this body of Christ. We see the connection of family. We are connected by this one simple act of welcoming in Jesus' name. It should make your heart feel fluttered. It should make your mind race with the wonder of it that we're all connected we're all one family we're all one part of Christ and Christ has brought us together and the one way that we can come together is by this simple act we're not here today to hear this story of a savior that died for our sins some 2,000 years ago which we know to be the truth and we're not here today to hear about God who's out here listening and hearing our prayers. We're here today learning the revelation that we are connected in the name of Christ Jesus. That we are given the power to act on Jesus' behalf. To welcome the lost sheep into his fold. Jesus says he gives us this authority freely and we are to give it freely. Each of us has a gift, a talent, that was freely given to us. A talent to use in the name of Jesus. As we follow his command to love our neighbors as ourselves, to love each other as Jesus loves us. Now this doesn't have to be some mighty talent. It doesn't have to be like the apostles, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead. It can be something as simple as giving a cold drink of water to a thirsty person. It can be something as simple as giving a hug to a lonely person. As simple as a gentle welcome to a stranger. There's a great many things you can do. From the very simple to the extravagant. One is no more important than the other. So far, I've spoken to you of what it means for you, for me, for all of us, to be welcomed in Jesus' name. And by so doing, Jesus being welcomed, of course, and God the Father who sent him. I spoke earlier about this fictitious family, this woman, who went from church to church, but was not welcomed. She or her family were unable to see the truth of Jesus. 
because Christ's servants would not welcome her. So, this brings me to the flip side of this message of welcome. I want you to think about a welcome mat. Picture it in your mind. A welcome mat is some rectangular or sometimes an oval mat. It's made of different substances, sometimes rubber, sometimes hair, sometimes cloth. But it's usually decorated in a beautiful fashion. It's placed on the stoop or the porch in front of your door. And it says something homey and friendly. It says something like, our humble cottage. And then underneath it in big print is, welcome. It's a warm, fuzzy gesture. And it produces a cheery feeling. And perhaps brings a smile to our visitor's lips. But it's conditioned upon a prerequisite. It says, wipe your feet. It says, you are not allowed in this house unless you wipe your dirty feet. Warm and fuzzy. Just got booted out by cold and hard. The woman that couldn't find Jesus in those churches, or wherever she wasn't welcome, she was nice enough, but perhaps her clothes were straight out of the 60s. Perhaps they were a little threadbare. She had a child, but well, there wasn't a husband with her. We might put on our best welcome mat attitude and say, Welcome to our church. Let me find you a seat here in the back close to the door. Our welcome mat might say, We need to bring new people into our church. We need to get out into the community to reach the people out there and let them know we're here. But not that guy, Jose, that came around earlier. And he's not quite the type that would fit with our congregation. And there's other churches out there where his people go. He can worship with them. But guess what? Jose traveled a great distance. He left home without any money. He didn't even bring a bag for food. He didn't bring an extra shirt or shoes, not even a walking stick. The only thing that Jose brought with him was a message. He was sent for a purpose. He wasn't welcomed. And when he wasn't welcomed, Jesus Christ was not welcomed. And when Jesus was not welcomed, God the Father in heaven, who sent his son to die for our sins, was not welcomed. May the peace of the Lord and his understanding guide us to do his will and to welcome all in his name. Amen.